hello. everyone oopsie good evening good evening I'm trying something a little different so let's see how all this works, okay? Come on in, come on in. I think this is going to be a blessed word. I know it is because it blessed me in preparing it. So come on in, please tag, share, and invite someone. When the enemy returns, when the enemy returns, God wants to equip you to stand against the enemy's attacks. Some of them, we know they're coming, right? And others, we don't know who our enemy is sometimes. He can be a subtle, a subtle um, presence. So come on in. Please tag, share, and invite someone. We are going to uh, try to get started right at 8 o'clock, which is only in about two minutes. So please come on in. Please tag, share, and invite someone. Let's get our numbers up. Our goal is to be here every week uh, and share the word of the Lord with you on Tuesday evenings, Tuesdays with Tuesday, teaching with Tuesday. Come on in. I pray that you all had a great day, a blessed day in the Lord. We thank God today. We thank God today. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We bless the name of the Lord. Father God, I love you today. More today than I did on yesterday. God, I ask that your presence be with us. And your presence rule in this moment. Let someone receive a word that changes their lives, God. That shifts them into another and greater understanding. To their next level. For bigger, better, greater, and more, God. Equip us, God, for what you have for us in this season. Daddy, we love you. We trust you. And we know, God, that nothing can take your place, God. We thank you, God, that you are are our protector you are our provider you are our keeper you are our sustainer and god we love you and we bless your name today god now wrap your arms around everyone under the sound of my voice whatever the cares of their life is at this moment god and let someone be revived in their spirit to lift up their heads and know hallelujah and square their shoulders back and know that God you have promised never to leave them never to forsake them so we have nothing to fear we thank you today daddy and we love you in Jesus name amen amen hello Andrea hello Tracy some of your names have gone up already and I didn't get to say hello and so forgive me if they swing back around and you comment a uh, good evening I will be able to acknowledge you. Amen. Amen. So we love God today. I do not have the rights to this music that's playing in the background. You know, we got to say that. I wanted to talk to us today about when the enemy returns. Uh, there is a very um, succinct text in scripture that talks to us about the enemy returning and a lot of times i think hello tasha we do not always blessings to you uh, minister andrea we do not always teach this text and equip people to understand that you can literally uh be delivered as a matter of fact, understanding that when you accepted Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord, you were you were delivered because 
man. And so you were delivered. Because you confessed Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord, he moved into your heart. And the Holy Spirit lives in you. Those who, the Bible talks about that the cursed is those who hung on the cross, but Jesus took every curse. And a part of your our curse was the punishment. Amen? But Jesus took all of that. And so you have been delivered. You have been delivered. Upon your confession of faith, you were delivered. I know it didn't feel like you were delivered because you were still struggling with your sin. And so was I. Ain't none of us exempt. However, the blood of Jesus set us free from the law and the punishment of sin and death. So you were delivered upon your confession. Right now, you can say, I've been delivered. Wait a minute. I didn't know that. Let me, let me tell you how I know you've been delivered. Let me just read a scripture into your hearing and remind you that you have been delivered. And I'm going to go back to this text, but I think it's important. Galatians 6, when it talks about the fruit of the spirit and the Bible tells us to put this, that these are the fruits of the spirit, right? In Galatians uh, chapter six, chapter five, and it says to us at the end of this text, it says, those who belong to Christ have crucified the flesh, have crucified the flesh, its passions and its desires. And since we live by the flesh, let us keep in step with the flesh. You didn't know that you had crucified your flesh when you and I accepted Jesus Christ. Our, our flesh was crucified with Christ on the cross. The minute we confessed Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord and, and when you were baptized and when you, when you did that visible demonstration of your belief in the life, burial, resurrection of Jesus Christ, you, you believed in the life, you went into the water standing up. You, you died to your sins. But then when you got up out of the water, you were, you were resurrected into the newness of life. Galatians tells us in Galatians chapter 5 that you, let me read it again, Galatians chapter 5 verses, verse 24. You who belong to Christ, do you belong to Christ? Please tag, share, and invite someone. Someone needs to know that they were already delivered by the cross. That upon your confession of faith, you were already delivered by the cross. And so when we understand this, he says that those who belong to Christ Jesus, Christ Jesus, the anointed one who saves, the anointed one, Christ, the anointed one who sanctifies Jesus, who saves you. He said you were crucified. Your, your flesh has been crucified and its passions and lustful desires. So you've already been delivered. That should be good news to someone. So because you understand this, often we're saying, well, how is it that I get caught up in these sins? And, and, and Corinthians tells us to lay aside every weight and every sin that so easily entangles us. I, I would ask you today, what, what is your sin? What is the thing that so easily entangles you. I, I would ask you that. And I would ask you to be honest with yourself in this very moment. What is that thing? What is it? What is it, beloved? I know what mine was. I know what mine can still be. Jokingly, I will say a good sale. I used to say a good sale at DSW. Okay. I used to say that, but what is that sin struggle that you have? Is it sex? Is it chasing after women? Is it Chasing after men? Is it sleeping with everything that moves? Is it overspending? Is it gluttony? Is it, is it laziness? Is it stubbornness? Is it pride? See, we forget about these sins, beloved. We forget about these character sins. We forget about those and we don't teach those often. Not just the lust of the flesh or homosexuality or, or gluttony or adultery or fornication. We don't teach these character sins, your pride, nasty attitude, being mean-spirited. What is the sin that so easily besets you? What is the sin that so easily entangles you? Hello, Brother Lloyd. Thank you for joining us. And so God talks about these things and he tells us to lay them aside. And many of you have 
laid aside the sins. You've laid aside, but somewhere you picked them up. What if I told you that the scripture tells us in Colossians, it's chapter three, I believe, and it talks about that. You know how we quote the scripture in Isaiah, no weapon formed against you shall prosper and every tongue that rises up against you, uh, God will give you, you, you and me the power to condemn it. It's not that God is going to condemn it. He's going to give us the power to condemn it. Every, every, every tongue, folk talking, folk running their mouths. Maybe your sin is anger. Maybe your sin is, is retaliation. You want to get back at somebody all the time. Maybe you hold grudges. Your sin, what is your sin struggle? I don't know. What is your sin struggle? Maybe you won't fight for what you should fight for. Maybe you won't stand up for what you should stand up for. And God is moving in us today to deal with our sins. But the scripture says in Colossians that Jesus took the weapons of the enemy and made a public spectacle of him by triumphing over him through the cross. What does that mean? So the Bible says that no weapon formed against you shall prosper. So the question has to be asked. If there are weapons being formed against me and they're prospering against me and these sins are things that I keep getting entangled in, then how does that keep happening? If Jesus took them. Oh, this is good. If Jesus took all of the weapons of the enemy and made a public spectacle of him and triumphed over him according to and by the power of the cross. Then how is it that I keep getting entangled? How is it that I keep getting caught up in things that are sin struggles? How is that? It's because you, your house has been cleaned and the enemy has come back. Please tag, share, and invite someone to join us this evening. Let me read to you where I'm coming from. When you're like, well, what do you mean? What do you mean that uh, uh, I, I, the, I, I put the enemy out and he came back? Yes, yes, that's the scripture. I don't like those. They're a little too bright. There's something. But the Bible tells us in Matthew chapter 12, now, hear me, when the unclean spirit has gone out of a man and it roams through waterless places, dry places, uh, places that have no life, places that are not filled with life and activity, he says he's been put out. The enemy was put out of our lives. We, we no longer have to struggle with those passions or those lustful passions or those sins or whatever those struggles are. If you've read my books, you know what my struggles have been in life. Uh, I used to be a thief, feel, love Jesus. But I talk about in Grace Broken and in Waiting and probably in one of my other books, how my therapist showed me that because I was stolen from, because I was touched inappropriately as a young girl, that that was my way of, of trying to bring back control into my life because I would go into places and steal things and wouldn't even use them. Would take them home, never use them, throw them away when I got outside the store. So the Lord had to show me he had to show me what was my struggle. Oh, yeah, we had some other struggles. I, I had some pride back in the day, and, and I try to keep that very, very far away from me. Don't don't act like I'm the only one or the sound of my voice. I just, I just have been delivered, and I seek to continue to walk in my deliverance. But listen, the Bible is clear. Don't, don't ever say what you won't do because the enemy is lurking. He's lurking for whom he can devour. So he will try to get you and me and any of us caught up again. So never get beside yourself to talk about what you won't do ever again. Because he wants us to become prideful and arrogant and make a confession that, oh, I've been so far removed. And there are things, there are things that you probably have been so far removed from that you will never do it again. But be careful. He's lurking. And seeking who he can devour. So the scripture says in, in Matthew chapter 12. When the unclean spirit 
has gone out of a man. You've been delivered. You may have gone through deliverance at a ministry. You may have taken yourself through deliverance. He says, and then the, the spirit, the spirit goes and roams through waterless, dry, lifeless places. Good God Almighty. And he said he searches for rest, the spirit. What is the thing that has been cast out of your life? Was it lust? Was it lust? Was it lack? Was it fornication? Was it adultery? What is the thing that has been cast out of your life? What is the thing that so easily entangled you that you have put down? What is that generational curse? What is that iniquity? That generational habit that runs through your family. Maybe the generational habit is children out of wedlock. Maybe the generational thing is, is struggle and lack and never having and always robbing Peter to pay Paul and never being able to get ahead. What is the thing? What is that generational iniquity? That you said, I've been delivered from that. I've been set free from that. No more, no more, no more. I'm free. I'm not going back. I am free. Praise the Lord. I am free. No longer bound, no longer chains holding me. My soul is rested. Hallelujah. It's just a blessing. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm free. That's your testimony. But one day you woke up and like, why am I having this temptation again? Why do I feel like I want to go smoke again or smoke crack again? I put that down. I had a good friend tell me the other day. She said, praise God with me. It's been a year and a half and I haven't picked up a cigarette. I said, to God be the glory. She said, but sometimes when I'm around people, I want to smoke. Sometimes when I'm around people, the smell, and she said, sometimes I can't avoid it. I thank God. She said that people are no longer smoking in buildings. She said, but I could walk outside and walk between somebody and they're smoking and I get that desire. She said, but then I, I hold on. It's been a year and a half. Listen, I want you to hear me. Please tag, share and invite someone. I need you to hear me, beloved. Celebrate how long you've gone and not gotten entangled. Yeah, we thought, uh, what's her name? Will Smith and his wife came up with the whole term of something being entangled, having an entanglement. No, that's scripture. That's scripture. Being entangled in something. The Bible says the sin, the desire, the lust that so easily entangles you. Maybe it's alcohol. No, you weren't an alcoholic, but you sure had to have a drink every day. Maybe you weren't the type of person that uh, overdrank to the point that you couldn't function. Maybe that was not your plight. But you got to have a drink every day. What is it the thing? What is the thing? What is the thing that so easily entangles you that it's difficult for you to put it down? See, we don't, we don't think of those things as sins. The Bible says that anything not done by faith is a sin. So is that thing that you can't put down, that you can't stop? Is that by faith? This is, this is a no judgment zone because I'm just here to help because Lord knows I tell on myself all the time, right? But ultimately, God wants us to live victorious lives. So let me go on and finish reading this scripture. So it says that that spirit that you cast out, you put that thing down. You, you don't struggle with that thing anymore. You've had a season that you walked in victory and, and you say, awesome, God, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Listen, I said earlier, celebrate how long you've gone and not fallen back into that sin. Celebrate that. Be proud of yourself that you have not gone back. The Bible says to weak and miserable ways, according to Galatians chapter four. He says, celebrate that. God is proud of you. And maybe you weren't even saying to God, God, keep me. I don't want to do this anymore. Maybe you weren't even saying that to him. But the grace of God, hallelujah, the goodness of God that followed you and kept you when you could have failed, but you didn't fall, when you could have got caught up again, but you didn't, when you could have went back to that man's bed, you could have went back to that woman's bed, you could have went back to that married person, but you, you stayed, you held on, but... For the grace of God. And so celebrate that. That you didn't give in. That you didn't retaliate. That you didn't want something to, to jump off in a situation. Oh, there is someone who needs to hear this word. Celebrate how long you didn't go back and hit that pipe. Or smoke that crack. Or smoke that weed. Or take that drink. 
and you didn't take that brother's 3 a.m. call. Celebrate that. Hallelujah that you didn't come to that mistress's uh, rescue and, and leave your wife and your kids at the dinner table or leave your marriage bread bed to go rescue her. Celebrate how long you were able to say no. Ah, it's a good day to be in Christ. It's a good day to know that God, God counts the days that you said no. I tell people all the time, one of the most powerful words that a believer or a person could ever speak is no. And sometimes you don't even have to say thank you. You know how we say no, thank you. No, just no, no, no. Don't call me again, no. So the Bible says, he, that spirit, you put him out. You put that man out of your house. You put that woman out your house. You said, get up off my couch and go get a job. And if you can't do that, then don't come back. You said, go get therapy. If you're not willing to get therapy, we can't get back together. And you've held to that principle. Good God Almighty. Someone should be encouraged tonight. Be encouraged that you held on. But the Bible says, you put the spirit out. And here in this text in Matthew chapter 12, it's talking about putting them out inside but in the natural it's some people you need to put out <laughs> it's some people you need to cut loose it's some people that you need to say you really not my friend you you really don't want what's best for me the bible says that it goes and it looks to find rest and it says i know what i can't find rest let me go back this is scripture it says let me go back let me return to my house from which I came. It claims your body as its residence. It claims your soul as its residence. He said, let me go back. The spirit says, let me go back to the house from which I came. And when it arrives, it finds the place unoccupied. I need you to remember that. It finds the place swept and put in order. It's clean. Ha! Huh. It says, then it goes and it finds and brings back seven other spirits more wicked than itself. Oh, tag, share, and invite someone. Someone needs to understand that. Have you ever found yourself saying, it was weed, now it's crack. It was alcohol, now it's weed and crack. It was one man, now it's three men. It was only two women I was running. Now it's four women I'm running. It was gambling $20 a week. Now it's $200 a day. Have you ever wondered, how did I get here? How did it get worse? How did that happen? You ever wondered? It's this scripture. Matthew chapter 12. Because I said, hold on to these three adjectives. These three descriptive things. It goes and it finds that the house it once lived in, that spirit, and it and, and natural spirit, man, woman, person, or the spirit of whatever that spirit was you've been delivered from. Unclean, wicked, nasty, perverted, whatever spirit it may be, character spirits, lustful spirits, flesh spirits. The Bible says. It goes, it comes back to where it once lived, mm -hmm, in you and me, and it finds that it's swept, but it's not occupied. There's Everything is put in order. It's dressed. It's beautiful. It's a model home, ready to be walked through and, and viewed and displayed. It's beautiful, but there's nothing in it. And it says it goes and gets seven more spirits and you're worse off. I, I've done this. I've ministered this word before and I literally started pulling people into the pulpit. You was a liar. You put that spirit out. Now you're a thief. You, you, now you're not just a thief. You're, you're stealing money from your job. Now you're an embezzler. So it just keeps getting worse and worse and worse. Now you were stealing from a grocery store or a, a department store. Now you're stealing from people you know. It just gets worse and worse and worse. And it's seven more. And you're saying, how did I get here? You find yourself in a bar in somebody's bed. And you're like, how did I get here? It was not paying one bill on time. And now you don't pay any bills on time. And you're like, yeah, my credit score is a little jacked up. But now it's all the way jacked up. Hey, I'm helping somebody today. What happened?
something. You just got lazy and irresponsible. So maybe you put out laziness, but you didn't fill the house with productivity. Maybe you put out lying, but you didn't fill the house with truth. Maybe you put out fornicating and lust and pornography, but you didn't fill the house with a healthy love. Yeah, yeah, that's what the scripture means when the enemy goes and it looks for and it returns to where it's been put out and it says, oh, this ain't even occupied. Oh, my God, this ain't occupied. They ain't put nothing here to replace me. They haven't put good where evil used to be. They haven't put peace where confusion used to be. Oh, I'm coming back. Now, they're, they're understand, listen, listen, understand the mindset. I know you're saying they're spirits, but they're strategic. They quickly, they quickly go and get spirits. Seven, seven, the perfect number of God. How you devil going to use the perfect number of God? You are a liar, but that's what they do. They go and they want to perfectly have you entangled in the sins that so easily beset you. They want you entangled. They want you worse off because the scripture says, and you are worse off than you were before you put them out. Tag, share, and invite someone because I'm going to help you learn how to be delivered when the enemy returns. How to set your house in order. This body, this body, this, this earthly body, your, your spirit man, and your natural home. Ah, you said I didn't put her aside. I'm not sneaking out, cheating no more. But have you come home and loved on your wife right? Have you bought her flowers lately? Have you told her how beautiful she was? Have you apologized? Have you asked for forgiveness? Set the house right. Fill the house up. Ah, put truth where you used to lie and say you were going to hang out with the boys. Oh, I'm coming around to the sisters too. I'm an equal opportunity corrector and minister. But but where you used to lie, where you used to lie and sneak out, where you used to take the money in the house and go buy her something and take her to dinner. Did, did have you apologized? Have you asked God for forgiveness? Have you asked your spouse for forgiveness? Oh, we got to do both parts of the cross. You'll hear me say this often. Don't just try to do this part, the vertical part. Oh, no, 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 no. Don't just, Lord, forgive me. I'm sorry. I know I shouldn't have did it. No, half the time we ain't sorry. We ain't sorry. We're sorry we got caught. That's, that's what it is. We're sorry we got caught. We ain't really sorry sometimes about what we did because the truth is we enjoyed what we was doing. Ah, yeah, I said it. We enjoyed it. We enjoyed it. We enjoyed it. So here we are in the text and God is saying, what have you filled your house with? When you put out cheating, did you bring back monogamy into your marriage? Did you bring back commitment and covenant into your marriage? Did you make a decision that I am going to honor my vows until the day I die? Did you do that? And then when he came back, beloved, when she came back, beloved, and they repented and they said they were sorry and asked you to forgive them and they, you put things in place so that there could be uh, constraints. Have you forgiven them? Or do you hold it over their head? Are you so fearful that they're going to go out and do it again? That you do not allow yourself to take in the joy of another time around, a second time. Oh, true repentance, the Bible says, brings about a righteous indignation that makes you want to do right, that makes you want to correct everything that you was doing wrong. Good God Almighty. Oh, God, I know this will help somebody if you heard the word that the Lord is ministering tonight. So the Bible says, the Bible says that it goes and it brings back seven other spirits more wicked than itself. And they go in to the house and they make themselves at home. This is why often deliverance is so difficult for some people and they have to keep coming back or they feel they have to keep coming back, keep coming back. And listen, when we used to have a deliverance ministry at our church, I used to say, listen, don't, don't be stepping in the waters, honey. You'll be like the sons of Sceva. That is not your weight. Do not punch up to your weight class because you will be like the sons of Sceva and 
come on up out of here jacked up don't don't punch don't fight don't try to deliver that's not your lane that is not your area. that's the one time i do agree with people when they say stay in your lane stay in your lane know your know your weight class glory to god and so the bible tells us that they make themselves at home so now it's not just hear me it's not just the one you you put out and you were delivered from and you were walking in your freedom for six months a year three years but somewhere you let your guard down you took off your armor mm -hmm. you got a little beside yourself you thought oh i can handle this i don't i don't need to keep praying to god about this i understand there are people that will tell you you ain't got to keep asking god about that you don't have to keep asking god to keep yes you do yes you do yes you do hallelujah the bible says that do not do not say what you what you won't do be it the will of God. God, keep me. God, I've been walking in this thing for, I'm starting to feel tempted. As soon as you start feeling the urge again, or you start getting tempted again, you take that thing back to God periodically. I'll just say, Lord, keep, matter of fact, I pray this quite often. Give me clean hands and a pure heart. Let there be nothing in me that's lifted up to vanity, greed, or pride. Glory to God. I pray that quite often. You know what your temptations are. You know what the sin is that so easily besets you. 38, 28, 40. You know it's that stretch wide 40 inch chest on that brother's salt and pepper, chocolate ball, vanilla, whatever your thing. You know what your thing is. You, you know, you know. So you ask God to keep you. Married, single, you ask God to keep you. And the Bible says, and it goes on in verse, in verse 40, it concludes in vo verse 45 when it says, and then it goes and it brings back seven other spirits more wicked than itself. And they go into your house, your body, and they live there. And the last condition of the man, of you, of me, who didn't fill our house with the things of God, who set everything in order and it looked real pretty on the outside or when somebody peeked in, but a closer look, you ain't filled with the Holy Spirit. You didn't ask God to fill this temple. You don't keep the word of God near your lips or in your heart. And that's why you're struggling again. You were doing well. The Bible says, what happened to you? What happened to you? He says, what happened to you? You were doing so well. He said, what happened to you? He said, he said, who, who entangled you again? He said, who did that? He said, who got you off course again? He said that now you're going back to weak and miserable ways. Matter of fact, the Bible says, woe to him who has caused you to stumble. It's not, he, God is more, for lack of a better word, I'm going to say angry at the person who caused you to stumble and you were running a good race. You were doing well. God is more angry at the person who called you at three o'clock in the morning, at the woman who tried to come in and mess with your marriage, with your weak self, and you gave in. Uh huh. He's more annoyed with them. He said, Woe to them who caused you to stumble. Now, we still have to be accountable if we take the call or we sneak out or we let them in. We're going to be accountable for that because the Bible says you're worse off. You allowing your child to be disrespectful at five. At 10, talking back, doing what they want to do, they go and get seven more. Hear what I'm saying. By the time they 12, 13, 16, they talk back, ready to fight you. Standing up in your face because you didn't set the order. You didn't set the order. Oh, they were real cute. It was cute when they were five. No, mommy. No, you make me sick. I'm not doing that. Oh, the day, the day. Y'all know I love all people, all races. I love everybody. I do. But let's just be real. There was a time that black kids didn't talk like that. Because we knew we, we might not even get up from the floor. We might not wake up. We might find ourselves in the bed and then slap for three days like Rip Van Winkle or something. Because we've been knocked out. But today, children, the last 10, 15 or so years, our children... 
some would say, because children are raising children. But why is it that children are raising children? Because some something happened in the parenting in the generation before. I guess that would be my generation, right? We give our children so much, so they become spoiled. Then they become brats, and then they become entitled, and then they don't understand what the word no means. And then they go get seven more spirits. Now they're stealing. Now they're lying. Now they're cheating. Oh, I need y'all to follow and hear me. The Bible says they go and get seven more, and you're worse off. You're worse off. Oh, my God. God wants somebody to hear me tonight. He wants you free. He wants you to be set free. He wants you to be made whole. There is therefore now no condemnation, no guilt, no shame for those who are in Christ Jesus. Yet, he still needs the truth of his word to be ministered to his people so that you have an understanding of why things keep coming back around. Why you can't seem to break that habit and go free from that thing. You know, there is a saying that it takes 40 days of doing something consistently that you create a new habit. So what is the habit? What is the generational thing? What is the iniquity? What is the sin that so easily entangles you that you are going to say today, I've been delivered from that. I know that I was delivered from that. And for 40 days, I'm going to be intentional about praying, about reading God's word, about speaking God's word, having his word come out of my mouth, declaring the thing, pronouncing the blessing over my life. For 40 days, I'm going to challenge you to do that. So tomorrow, starting the third. So what would that be? If somebody could count that for me, tell me what the date that would be 40 days from tomorrow. I'm thinking December, maybe 13, 14, something like that. Someone tell me what 40 days from tomorrow is. You will be intentional about filling your house. You will be intentional about not just making it pretty and it look good. But the Bible says, <coughs> think upon things that are lovely Things that are pure, things that are of a good report, things that are from above. You got to, your mind. So let, let me talk to you about this. The Bible says that it's unoccupied. There's nothing there. It says that it's been swept clean and it has total order. So when you think of mind, body, spirit, mind, body, December, thank you, Sands. December 13th is 40 days. 40 days, mind, body, spirit. Unoccupied. Unoccupied. Mm -hmm. your, your house, this body, is what is set in order. What is it that you need to do physically to set your life in order? Physically, this body. What do you need to do? Is it exercise? Is it 40 days of eating right? Is it walking? Is it going to the gym? For 40 days, fill this body with good things. This is where you start to see a fast. Um, maybe you just say, I'm going to drink. Uh, I'm going to eat more vegetables. M maybe you go on a 40-day fast. Maybe you become very intentional about uh, putting things in order in this body. That maybe you don't drink soda for 40 days. Maybe you drink a gallon of water for 40 days. You're going to put this body in order. But you're going to fill it. You're going to fill this body with something good. You're going to put down the snicker. And amen, you're going to put down the snicker and, and the, uh, the Twinkies or whatever it is you eat, honey buns, whatever, the Pepsi. And you're going to do something to, to sanctify this body that you're going to tell the devil, no, 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 no. You don't get to come over here doing whatever you want to do. You go, here you go. That person you dating that you ain't married to and y'all, you know, knocking boots and dropping it like it's hot. See if he or she, because sometimes it ain't just him. If they can go 40 days and keep their hands off you and not go cheat with somebody else. You'll know this is the person I'm supposed to be with. 
this is the person I'm supposed to marry. See, this is the thing I keep saying I'm going to do a relationship thing. Because what people don't understand, if you cannot go 40 days and not have sex, two days, two weeks, three weeks, a month, and not have sex with someone you're dating, you should not be marrying them. Let me tell you why. Because any of you, either of you could get sick one day and may not be able to have sex. So if I'm sick and unable to have sex, you going to go out and cheat? You ain't got no self-control? So sanctify this physical body. Put this body in order. Oh, I'm helping you. I'm helping you now. I'm helping you for 40 days. For 40 days. Make a commitment. Don't make a vow. Make a commitment and be intentional. Then the Bible says it's swept. It's swept. Swept. So that's the corners. Getting stuff out of the corners and mind, body. That's your mind. That's your mind. Get them old ways of thinking out of your mind. Stop saying stuff like, if it ain't one thing, it's another. I'm under the weather. Something always happening to me. No, 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 no. Change the way... 40 days, for 40 days, you are going to think different. And because you're thinking different, you're going to speak different. Ah, glory to God. This is just good to me. And let me tell y'all something. If you notice, I ain't got no notes in front of me. God told me you're going to teach this from your spirit. So this right here, this is from the Holy Spirit. For 40 days, I have never thought about until now. Good God Almighty. I've never thought about what do each of these things represent. So God said, putting your body in order, swept clean your mind, get those old ways of thinking out that are serving you no purpose. The old ways of thinking, get them out. They're serving you no purpose. Be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. For 40 days, you're going to be on a renewing mindset. You're going to be on that road. No, watch what you say. Soon as something come out your mouth that you shouldn't say, but uh, uh, I pull that back. Nope, not gonna say that. I ain't got no money. I'm broke. No, 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 no. Nope, I'm between. I'm between increases. Find another way to say that. Hallelujah. My blessing is coming for forty days. You gonna declare the blessings of the Lord over your life. I am born. I am rich. I am highly favored. Hallelujah. I am blessed with, I am blessed and highly favored. I have favor with God and I have favor with man. You're going to speak for 40 days and you're going to feel what has been, you're going to sweep it and fill it with the word of God. It's swept clean, but you're going to fill it with the word of God. And some of you may say, well, I don't know. I don't know if I've been delivered. I don't, I don't know if it's, if I've been, if it's been swept. I'm not, I'm not sure. Well, declare that. You know what you say that you shouldn't say. You know the things that don't bring God glory that you do. I know mine. Oh, I hate her. He gets on my nerves. And some of this stuff, y'all be like, oh, I was just playing. Stop saying you playing that your husband get on your nerves. Stop saying that. Stop saying she, she's a, she's a mess. Stop it. Because you're speaking. You're saying things that you shouldn't say. And you don't even realize you're creating what you don't want. And you keep manifesting what you don't want because power is in the li is in life is death is in the power of your tongue. You call him what you want him to be a man of valor, a man of integrity, a man of wisdom, a man of strategy, a leader. You call him what you need him to be and what God has created him to be. And then you speak well of her. She's amazing. She's beautiful. She's well kept. Hallelujah. She's smart. She's intelligent. She's a great cook. Glory to God. Hallelujah. He's a wonderful lover. She's a wonderful lover. Call him. Call him what you need him to be. 40 days. 40 days. Then the Bible says that that place is unoccupied. There's nothing living there. There's no life there. Life and death and the power of your tongue. Life, the spirit of God. Ask God to fill you with his spirit. Fill you with his spirit as you speak the word and you fill your body with your, your mind. You're reading the word and your mind is being renewed by the word. That word is filling your body. How can a man keep his ways clean? By filling his mind, his body, his mouth with the word of God. Oh, God has just given us a strategy tonight 
for you and for me. And let's walk by it. Let's walk by. Now, I want to read this last thing and we're going to wrap up. We're going to be done. Can you can you just hold out with me for a little bit? The Bible tells us to put on the full armor of God. This is the last thing in this 40 days. Every day, I want you to say, I put on the I put on the helmet of salvation. Guard my mind, God. Even right now, say it with me. I put on the helmet of salvation. Guard my mind, God. Give me the mind of Christ. I put on the breastplate of righteousness. Guard my heart. I seek to be the righteousness of God. The Bible says you are the righteousness of God in and through Christ Jesus. He said that you might be. He who knew no sin, Jesus, became sin so that you and I might be called, might be called the righteousness of God in and through Christ Jesus. Why is it might be? Because we have to choose to be called the righteousness. We got to put on and keep on the breastplate of righteousness. Put on the belt of truth. Put it on. Put it on. I will speak truth. I will keep my loins connected to truth. You ain't married to him. None should. He shouldn't be entering. He don't own that. Mm. Glory to God. And you shouldn't be trying to enter because that ain't yours yet. Glory to God. Mm -hmm. Put on the breast. Put 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 on the belt of truth. Speak truth. The word of God. Jesus. Say his name. Many times throughout these next 40 days. Oh, oh, the enemy will try to come back. The Bible says he quickly goes and goes get seven more. He will come and find. Oh, wait a minute. They didn't start to fill this place up. Ain't no room for me. Ain't no room for fornication. Ain't no room for adultery. Good God Almighty. There's no room for the liar anymore. There's no room. There's no room. There's no oh, Shabbaha. There's no room. Glory to God, there's no room for anger and bitterness and unforgiveness. Oh my God, they fill this space with love. They've let stuff go. There's no room for the thief. There's no room. There's no room. You struggling with your sexuality? You're saying, Lord, I don't want to live like this. I don't want, but I have a desire for men and I'm a man. I have a desire for women and I'm a woman. For 40 days, for 40 days, be intentional. If that means you have to separate yourself from whoever that is, girl, female with the guy that you shouldn't be with, guy with the girl you shouldn't be with, any of this. I tell people all the time, I understand what we try to say about homosexuality and, and that sin is worse than any sin. I do have a, a thought about that. I do believe that there is... Because God created all of us and when we someone wakes up and says, well, I'm a, I'm a boy, but I feel like a girl or I'm a girl and I feel like a boy and I'm a girl and I like girls. I'm a boy. I like boys that somewhere in there we're telling God that he made a mistake when he created you. But that's between you and God and you all can go and have that conversation. But everybody ain't struggling. Everybody ain't struggling. But for those of you who will hear this later are under the sound of my voice and you are struggling for 40 days, for 40 days, be intentional in prayer, be intentional with your words, be intentional to pray the word. Don't beat yourself up. Oh, I'm a sinner. Stop saying you're a sinner saved by grace. Stop saying that. That ain't biblical. That ain't biblical. You were a sinner who has been saved by grace. Is it possible for you to sin as the righteousness of God? Yep, you can sin, but are you a sinner? Is your life, is your life a lifestyle of sinning? I pray not. I pray not. But we have a wonderful advocate that we can go to the high priest of Jesus and say, Lord, forgive me. I don't want to do this anymore. I know this does not bring you glory. I know you're not pleased. And I want to please you. Not because... Law says it, or they say it, or the preacher says it, or Dr. Tuesday says it, or Prophetess Tate says it. Not because, but for you, for you, God. So, you're going to put on the, the helmet of salvation. You're going to put on the breastplate of righteousness. You're going to lift up the shield of faith. Everything that you do over these 40 days is going to be by faith. 
from the from the top of your head to the soles of your feet because that's how tall these shields were. They covered their whole body. So this shield of faith, you're guarding your heart with the breastplate of righteousness. Yeah, you're going to be lonely because you put them out. Because you put down the cigarettes, you might get a little nervous. You put down the weed or you put down the liquor or whatever your thing is. You might get the jitters. But by faith, you ask God to keep you. You're going to put on the bell of truth. You're going to put, you're going to put up. You're going to put on the, the, the sandals of the gospel. You're going to tell somebody in these 40 days about Jesus. And you're going to walk it out. This is how you keep your house clean when the enemy tries to return. And you tell him, there's no room for you here. This is all occupied. You can't live here anymore. Mm -mm. I've been set free. I've been made whole. And if I miss it, I have a great advocate. Glory to God who will forgive me because I will repent and I will say, God, forgive me. God, deliver me. God, set me free. Oh, I messed up again. Help me, Lord, and he will do it. So you have your marching order, soldiers of the cross. 40 days. Tomorrow through December the 13th, we are going to daily, daily do something to set this body, this physical man in order. We're going to do something to, to, to clear our minds of the clutter and the things that don't benefit us or bring the God or ourselves or our lives any glory. And then spiritually, we're going to find this house occupied. Churches are open now. Find yourself in someone's worship surface. Wear your mask. Amen. Wear your mask. Social distance. I know you're watching online. That's cool too. Do what you need to do. But find yourself in worship. Listen to worship music. Go to sleep to worship music. Wake up to worship music. Pray daily. Put the word in you daily. 40 days. And I'm telling you, your house is going to be filled. And that thing that tempted you, that so easily entangled you, you're going to be able to say no to it. To the glory of God. To the glory of God. Paul says... Put on the full armor of God so that you will be able to resist and stand your ground in the evil days. You will be able to resist and stand your ground when the enemy tries to come back and revisit your clean house and he won't be able to re-enter and get back in. Nope, I've changed the locks. I've closed the windows. There is no way in. When he calls you at 3 o'clock in the morning, no. Matter of fact, don't even answer. Block his number. When she call you talking about my tire bust. I need money for my tire. And you get up out your wife's bed. You and your spouse's bed. To go help her. Or you leave work and go help her. No, no, no. Block her. Change your number. Oh, yeah. In 40 days, you can do a lot of things to trip up the enemy. Because God said he will not have you ignorant of Satan's schemes and devices. I know. I'm here to help. I got all kinds of strategies. So Lord, we bless your name today. I pray that this word has blessed someone, that they will be fully equipped and fully prepared to stand against the schemes and works of the devil, not just tomorrow for the next 40 days, but beyond. And God, for any of us who have stumbled, who have fallen short of your glory, who have sinned today, this week, God, who, who might mess up in these 40 days, God, we ask for your forgiveness. But let us be quickened immediately to say, Lord, forgive me. Lord, help me. Lord, strengthen me. God, let no one feel the condemnation of what the enemy will try to do to them over these 40 days. Oh, God, we thank you. We love you. We know it's not going to be easy, God. We know it's not going to be easy because the devil himself came and tempted Jesus for 40 days when he was in the desert fasting. And he said to him, I'll be back at a more opportune time. God, I thank you. I thank you. I thank you that you will strengthen your sons. You will strengthen your daughters. They will walk in the fullness of your glory, in the fullness of your strength. They will lay aside the sin and the weight 
the weight of the sin, the guilt of the sin, the condemnation of the sin, hallelujah, the shame of the sin. They'll lay it aside. They'll lay it down, God, and then I ask that your battle axe come and shatter it. Hallelujah, God, and send it to the winds, to the north, the south, the east, and air double. Hey, God, that you, God, you said you'll remember those sins no more and let them not remember them anymore. The sin that so easily entangled them, entangled us as your people, oh God. When they try to go do it again, they don't even know how to sin like they used to. Good God Almighty. God, we thank you for real and true deliverance. Oh God, they don't come by somebody just laying their hands on us. God, we thank you for the anointing that comes and breaks the yoke, oh God. But we thank you, Father, that we can participate in our deliverance. We can participate in us being set free. Glory to God and made whole. God, thank you, Jesus. Glory, glory, glory. I thank you tonight, God. Hey, Sha Tabo say, hey, God, I thank you. And I bless your name. I bless your name. Let someone go forth with the impartation that they have the authority because the weapons, the weapons of your warfare are not carnal. They are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. To the pulling down of things that have kept you entangled. Good God Almighty. Those weapons of prayer, of the word, of the armor. All of those are weapons. All of those are weapons. This is a weapon. God has given you a weapon for the next 40 days. Your obedience is a weapon. Your worship is a weapon. Your giving is a weapon. And so I thank you. I thank you. I thank you. You're right. Someone just put, you forgot to put your link if they wanted to give to the ministry. Um, if you want to give to the ministry, it's T-Tape Ministries. You can go and find it in the nonprofits. I'll put the link here. I forgot. I'll be forgetting to do that kind of stuff. <laughs> Forgive me. So I love the Lord today. I love you. Please join us next week, uh, 8 p.m. Please tag, share, and invite somebody. Let us get these numbers up so we can um, advance God's kingdom and encourage God's people that they grow and they feel empowered uh, every Tuesday uh, evening as the Lord uh, allows me to be here with you until he says something different. Amen. I love you, Sands. I love you so much. Thank you for your support. Be blessed and be encouraged. I speak over businesses. I pronounce the blessing over your businesses, over your ministry, good God Almighty, over your marriages. I pronounce the blessing. Hallelujah. That God will go with you. The favor of the Lord rest upon you. Make his face to shine on you. And we will bless his holy name. Bless your education. I pronounce God's blessing over your education, over your ministry, over your business, over your marriage, over your godly relationships. Hallelujah. I pronounce the blessing over you as a mother. Hallelujah. As a child. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Over that husband that's coming, that wife that's coming. Glory to God. I pronounce God's blessing over you tonight, over your healing. Good God Almighty, and we declare that you are the righteousness of God in and through Christ Jesus. Be blessed today, tonight, and the rest of this week. I will see you next week. God bless you.